BHP's petroleum exploration strategy is to target areas where we can find tier one opportunities. For us, that means the potential to deliver 100,000 BOEs a day net to BHP. It's areas that we can explore for a decade and produce for half a century. As you know, the Gulf of Mexico is one of the oiliest basins on the planet. There's been many giant fields found across the entire industry. And it's had a history of the technology evolving in lockstep with exploration. So as the technology has evolved, we've been able to drill deeper and more complicated targets. For over two decades, BHP has been an active explorer and producer in the Gulf of Mexico. We have an impressive history of applying leading edge seismic technology to unlock value in this region, and we continue to focus on world-class hydrocarbon bearing basins. We believe that our Ocean Bottom Note Survey in the Western Gulf of Mexico is a significant step forward in our exploration journey. Over the last few years, we've rebuilt our portfolio and we focused into those areas where we believe the geological criteria fit. Our plate to pour analysis of the Gulf of Mexico indicated that there is still significant remaining potential and it focused us into two main areas. One, in the Western Gulf of Mexico and also in the Mexican sector. The Western Gulf is an area that's very technically challenged and currently underexplored. And we're hoping to apply technology there to unlock the large structures and fields that we think are potentially in that area. The unique geological features in the Gulf of Mexico originate back to the Jurassic period around 170 million years ago, a time when North America, South America, and Africa were drifting apart and were separated only by a narrow, shallow sea. Under the baking sun, the water evaporated and precipitated salt. Over several million years, the Gulf of Mexico continued to open as the continents slowly moved away from each other. As the basin further developed, it drained eroded material from the ancestral Rocky Mountains and Appalachians on the bounding continent to the north. Layer by layer, the salt was covered over and buried deeply. However, salt has several unique characteristics that sets it apart from its surrounding rocks. During burial, it behaves as a viscous fluid and flows, forming domal features called diapirs that often coalesce to form an extensive salt canopy below the seabed. Today, the subsurface of the Gulf of Mexico is dominated by immense salt structures, often thousands of feet high. Movement of the salt has contorted the surrounding rock layers into structures that have the potential to trap large volumes of migrating hydrocarbons. In these traps lie the potential reservoirs. One of the major challenges in the Gulf of Mexico as a whole is being able to see and map accurately are the traps, the structural traps that hold the oil in the subsurface. Just as a bat uses reflected sound or echoes to see at night, geoscientists use sound to see into the earth. At the boundary of different rocks, the sound will reflect or echo back. By using computers, it is possible to track the sound back to the point from where it reflected and generate an image of the rock type boundaries. This is called a seismic image. But in order to place the boundaries correctly in the subsurface, it is necessary to know the velocity at which the sound travels through the rock. There's a big difference between the velocities in the salt and the velocities in the sediments that make up our reservoir layers beneath. If we don't get that, those velocities exactly right, then the image beneath becomes extremely poor. BHP has been active in the Gulf of Mexico for over 25 years. With the opening of our production heartland with the discovery of Neptune, and follow-up discoveries in Atlantis, Mad Dog, and Shenzi, we've built a material position over the last 20 years. What we're doing with our OBN in the Western Gulf of Mexico, in a way, is not that different from our past. 
We started off with 2D seismic in the deep water in the central Gulf of Mexico. We then moved to 3D seismic, where we made our discovery. We appraised Shenzi on multi-3D seismic, where we would combine more data sets to get a better image. We then moved to wide azimuth and multi-azimuth. Between 2012 and 2016, we started acquiring leases in the Western Gulf of Mexico, building up a significant acreage position. We then started to reprocess the seismic data, applying all the latest existing technologies to better image the subsurface and understand the traps. And it wasn't enough. We weren't able to successfully image the prospects to the level that we needed to, to move ahead with drilling. Trying to see through the salt in the central Gulf of Mexico is a little bit like sitting in an airplane at 30,000 feet and looking down on a cloudy day. The clouds are scattered, you can see gaps, you can see bits and pieces as you fly over. The western Gulf of Mexico challenge is very different. There, it's a rainy day. It's cloud everywhere and you're trying to see down through it and you're still trying to get that image from 30,000 feet. By 2014, the Central Gulf of Mexico saw some of the most advanced conventional streamer surveys ever conducted. By illuminating from multiple directions, geoscientists could better see between and under the canopy of salt. However, in the Western Gulf of Mexico, there is a more extensive and thicker canopy which leaves the geoscientists in the dark. But one piece of technology may be able to solve the illumination problem. The uniquely designed seismic acquisition using autonomous recording devices, ocean bottom nodes. The concepts and the use of ocean bottom nodes has been around for a, a bit of time, and we're seeing people apply it into existing production assets or likely discovered resources. It's a great example of someone who had um, understood a technology that existed and came up with a concept of how we could apply it in a different way um, and specifically to the issue that we had in the Western Gulf of Mexico. What's unique about this survey is it actually um, is pushing the limits in terms of the spacing of the nodes, the angles that we are executing um, it on, the depth that we are going to interpret the data down to. Um, so it'll give us a completely different ocean bottom node uh, seismic concepts. What we're doing in a classic seismic survey is we will have about 10 kilometers offset between the source and the receiver. What we're doing in our OBN survey is moving that to 90 kilometers nearly 60 miles between the source and the receiver. That sound will travel down 10 miles into the ground along 60 miles and then come back up to the receiver. If you think how long 60 miles is, it's driving for an hour. That's like sitting on a quiet afternoon in the Hamptons and being able to hear the traffic in the middle of Manhattan. It's like bursting a balloon in the middle of Melbourne and hearing it in Geelong. Are the crowds cheering at Tottenham occasionally and hearing it down in Brighton? Previous work had not worked with this long offsets and had not gone through the same type of complicated geology with very complicated salt. And we have realized that we needed a new type of seismic data to get a better seismic image or of the subsurface. And what we're trying to do here is to have seismic waves that we generate actually go all the way down to the basement and come back up. And from there, we can measure the time it takes for them to travel through and we can then derive the propagation velocity model that we need of the seismic waves in a 3D sense. We've been doing uh, quite extensive modeling studies and trying to understand the noise level. We generated a model of the subsurface, a lot of ray tracing, but we primarily based it on finite difference modeling of the actual waves traveling through the Earth. And then actually taking these 
starting with a poor velocity model, running with uh, accurate data, going back to generating the velocity model from the simulated data and then imaging with this data. From there, we could see that we could actually get a good seismic image of the actual model. And from there, we actually base on how densely do we need to space the nodes, how densely do we need to space the shots of, or generating the source wavelets and come up with an optimal survey because we don't want to do overdo this because obviously all of this costs a lot of money. On paper, everything looked like it would work just fine, but before committing a large amount of resource time and effort, they worked in a very agile way and uh, put together a small scope to do a test run. So less than 1% of the size of the total survey to see if we could actually get um, the results that we were looking for. And that makes me even more excited because the initial test run looked really good. It's probably going to be the largest OBN survey ever conducted so far. Um, the area of the nodes will consist of 100 OCS blocks uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, which is equivalent to about 2,500 square kilometers. The source area, which is basically the halo that goes out around the uh, node coverage area, is quite a bit larger than that. That's 7,000 square kilometers. So it, it's quite a large area. We are requiring very long offsets, which will allow us to better understand the seismic velocities through the salts and through the sediments. And with that, we should, we believe, be able to produce a much cleaner, clearer, crisper image of the traps that lie below. And if we can successfully describe and analyze those traps and understand exactly where they are, then we should be in a position to make a decision to go ahead and drill. To do an operation like this takes an enormous amount of effort from people across our company, whether that's supply, finance, geoscience operations, exploration technical, HSE. BHP is a technology company. Technology is our lifeblood, whether that's our computing systems and our ability to interpret data, whether that's seismic data, which allows us to image under the sea, or whether that's our operating technology that allows us to be the most efficient producer our OBN acquisition is part of that journey that we're on to use technology to unlock value for the corporation.